I'm going to do a quick update on using DNA plotter and I'm going to run through preparing an annotation from a selected part of a circular bacterial genome. First things first, you're going to need a few things. Here I've got the subflava genome and this is in the GenBank format. Looking at GenBank, you can see in here there's the coordinates of the gene. If you have a look here, gene coordinates, the name of it as well, if present, if it's other than hypothetical, as well as the predicted peptide sequence as well, so the protein. So you'll need a copy of that. Additionally, I've found it useful. I've got the annotation file in an Excel format, and I've found this particularly useful to use when carrying out other tasks like I'm going to do today. So those are the two things, GemBank file and a copy of Excel. This is an annotation carried out by RAST. Obviously you want to make sure that the information is the same between, for example, the gene coordinates that have been predicted by RAST as well as GemBank. First I open up the Artemis DNA plotter tool. You know, ask you to read in a sequence file or read a template file. For this you want to read in a sequence file. And then I'm going to select from the desktop this GenBank file here. This is for Neisseria subflava. So we enter that. And what you see here is the DNA plotter has, it's a single circular chromosome and you've got genes on the forward strand and the reverse strand and then there's a couple of other tracks in here that you can see here with other features in. So depending on what you want to look at, if you go into options, if you look on track manager, you'll see here this information relates to what you have on this circular diagram. So track one and two relate to these blue features here, which are your genes, so coding sequences. Track three, actually on the image here, appears to be empty. Track four, as you can see here, miscellaneous features. And track five here represents some other features within the chromosome itself. And in this case, it's put tRNA loci in here. I just want to look at the genes on the forward and reverse strand. So I can actually delete some of the tracks that I don't need. So I'm going to delete track three here. And here. So what I'm left with now is just an image that looks like this. What you can also do at this point is adjust the position and the size of these lines. Say for example I adjust this to 20 here and 20 here. Press the update tracks. You can see it makes these a little bit larger. Additionally you can change the position of these if you want to move them. If you change that say for example to 0.8 and then update tracks again. You see now it starts to look a bit like that. There's other features in here that you can actually fill in this centre bit. Say for example, if you want to look at the overall GC content of the genome, if you go on graph, you can choose GC plot or GC skew. And this is quite useful to look at regions of the genome that might have different GC content. If we just look at GC skew for example and press draw additionally, Graph, GC plot, and draw. That's going to look a bit like that. So you might find that your cluster of genes that you're looking at might fall within a region with a different GC content. I'll just take that off for now. The next thing to do is I'm going to open up my nice series of Flava Excel file and I've selected a region of the genome that I want to represent on that circular image. As you can see here, the start and stop coordinates of the gene. Additionally, in this column here, you can see whether it's actually on the forward or reverse strand. I've decided already, and I'll just bring it up, that I want to look here. Cytosol aminopeptidase, or PEP-A, as it's been predicted to be. If I just find where that is, I'm just going to look at this cluster here, cluster of genes. I'm just going to highlight that for a minute. So what you can see is you've got this first gene is on the reverse strand and then you have a cluster of genes here from the opposite strand and here reverse. So I'm going to see what that looks like when I actually put that into the DNA plotter tool. If I open up DNA plotter again, if I go on options, for this you want DNA wizard and then it asks you edit current DNA display, press OK. And you can see here you've got the start and stop coordinates for the gene. Additionally up here, it's in the circular format, 
you can change that to linear as well and we'll do that in a minute it starts at position zero and then this is the stop that's the final nucleotide of that circular sequence there's some other functions in here you can change and we'll do that in a minute but just for now if you look in your excel file you can see here this first gene it's on the minus strand so you've got coordinates here 172439 172970 we'll start with this here if you copy that value there go into artemis you want to find out where that is in this list here if you look down the list here it is here pep a so what i'll do firstly is because that's on one strand i'm going to color that blue so you can change the color of that feature there and then as we said in that cluster that we were looking at the final one here has start and stop coordinates of here and here we want to select the stop coordinates for that gene which is here and then if you want to find that in your list 1729459 which is that one so additionally color that dark blue or whatever color you want now these ones in between if we look at that these are all on the same strand here so we've got these two flanking genes here on the negative strand these are all on the plus strand so what i'll do is color these so for example green just to differentiate between the two obviously this just highlight the difference but you know you can select any color you want really So when you've done that if you press enter you'll see on your image here it's quite a small region but you can see it highlighted there you can save this image save as jpeg save it on the desktop or you can do it as a jpeg or other formats i'm going to do it as a jpeg and if you just call this say for example circular genome now if you have a look at where that is here's your image here so if you copy that, I'm just going to put this into PowerPoint. So what you've got now is that's your circular genome there. Now we want to select just this part here to have a look at. There's something else you can do now. If you go into options, go into DNA wizard again, edit current DNA display, that's what we want to do. If you find out where that cluster was that you were looking at, that's here. For your circular genome, you've got the start and stop coordinates, so that's looking at the entire circular genome. What we're going to do is just focus on this region here. So if you go to the start coordinate for that first gene, copy that and put it into here. And for this final gene here, I'm going to copy and put into the stop coordinate there. So you're just looking at this region here. For the tick interval, you'll want to change this. So the tick intervals are these marks around the side of the circle here. So we're going to change the tick interval just because we're looking at a much smaller region. So I'm going to change that to a thousand. And for the minor tick interval, so that's the ticks in between these larger intervals, I'm going to change to 500. At this point as well, we want to look at a linear portion because this is linear, not circular. So change that to linear and then press enter. You can see you have to do a little bit of formatting at this point. This is the region we're looking at here. If you press Control I, you can actually zoom in to this portion of the genome. So you can see it's starting to take shape here. So another thing you can do at this point, if you go back into DNA Wizard, Edit Current DNA Display, just locate the region you're looking at again. Here in this column, you've got line width. So if you adjust the line width, that's going to adjust the width of these light blue or dark blue and green bars. I'm not going to adjust that, but you can actually add in arrow heads and tails onto this image just to represent the direction that your genes are pointing. For this one, you remember this one was on the negative strand, so I'm going to put arrow tail for that one, as well as for this one. So those flanking genes are in one orientation. For the other cluster genes in the middle, I'm going to put arrow head on because they're all going in the opposite direction. So if you press enter again, you see your image now looks like this. So these are pointing this way and these this way. I'm just going to do this quite simply now. I'm going to save this image and I'm going to do it by print screen. But you can save this as a JPEG, but just for simplicity, I'm going to print the screen. 
And then if I put that into PowerPoint, it depends what level of quality you want on your image. Say if it's just to look at for personal use or whatever, then this is okay. But say if it's for a publication or presentation, you might want to improve the quality of the image and you can do that using Photoshop. If you put that into a PowerPoint like that, you can do other interesting things just to tidy it up a bit. If you put a board around it, say for example, and then insert, say, an arrow. You'll end up with something looking a bit like that. So that's another use of Artemis DNA plotter. One of the circular genome makes things to do highlight some regions within that genome, and then you can expand on that image, to identify one cluster of genes, and then produce some sort of image that looks like that. I hope that's helped you. It takes a bit of time getting used to some of these programs. Sometimes a few pointers can help.